<laughs> That's right! I got you, didn't I, my noble outlaws? I think the light reflecting off the mask is doing something to the camera, but in any case, that's right. Jason Voorhees video. Comment down below if you want to see me wear the mask and the rest of these. I still have Revenant Zombie Jason's videos to do, and then I also have Jason X, and even I'm planning to do the whole Jason Power Scale thing. Me fighting all the versions of Jason. Now, I'm going to lump Jason from part 3 and part 4 together, which is this Jason right here. Simply because both part 3 and part 4, Jason is still human. He's at his most powerful in his human form at this moment, but still. Now, there's not a whole lot I can say about fighting human Jason. As I've said before... The primary, the primary strategy for dealing with Jason Voorhees as when he's human is simply to get him into an open area where I can force a face-to-face -face confrontation. And I know what you're going to be thinking, Outlaw Samurai, these are best-case scenarios. You're not taking into consideration what if Jason attacks you from behind a tree what if Jason sneak attacks you and blah 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 dee -dee, blah dee -dee, blah blah blah? Well, here's the thing. If I don't know where Jason is, then clearly he has the advantage. But in these fight scenarios, I'm basically betting on Jason's whole Terminator style of killing. As soon as he sees his target, he will go directly at it. And this has been proven before, like in Jason Voorhees, when he gets resurrected in part six, where we see, I believe his name was Tommy, called Jason from the lake, and Jason immediately gave up attacking the uh, cabin full of school children and the girl to go directly towards him. So... Jason can be coaxed out relatively easily. So these best chance scenarios are actually canon to how Jason would react. Especially if I come out and it's like, JASON! And shout out to get his attention. He would immediately beeline towards me. So, in any case... Fighting Jason Voorhees, I'm going to basically just refer to him as Hockey Mask Jason. Now, to make the distinction, Hockey Mask Jason is Jason when he's human and has his hockey mask. Undead Jason is pretty much every other iteration after this. Until I get to Cyborg Jason. Now, how would I fight Hockey Mask Jason? Well, simply put, like I said, I would lure him into an area where I could take full advantage of the use of my sword and basically carve, slash, stab, and cut him until he no longer can move. Because here's the thing. Whenever you see these, like, fighting... People have the notion that uh, you have to... Do a big, awesome, powerful finishing move like Getsuga Tensho! Or something like that. With a sword. And while, yes, they are cool, don't get me wrong, they're impractical as hell. You come charging at someone like this, ah! and their first instinct won't be to draw back and meet your slash, their first instinct will just be raise blade and stab you. Okay, anyone with any kind of martial skill will know that if an idiot is charging at you like this, you have basically three immediate options you can take. One, raise the blade and stab. Two, sidestep and slash. Or three, just sidestep and then slash across their back. 
side step, quarter step, and slash across their back. Anyone going like this is going to ask to be killed. All right, that that's a given. All right. So, with that in mind, fighting hockey mask Jason Voorhees would just pretty much be, like I said, fighting bag face Jason. Luring him out into the open where I could take advantage of my weapon of choice, which is a sword. Now, you may be wondering, well, outlaw, what if you don't have your sword? What if Jason gets rid of my... What if Jason... Uh, Causes you to drop the sword or lose the sword or something like that. And fair point. However, here's a counter rebuttal to that. One is the martial arts style that I use, the Howling Wolf style. Pretty much sees everything as a weapon. So if I was to lose the sword... As long as there are objects around me, I am not completely helpless. Let's say Jason chases me into the kitchen and I'm able to grab a frying pan. Well, immediately I have a blunt force object. The frying pan has an edge, be it very dull, but still. So if I hit him right, I have a uh, chopping implement. I have two handles, so I could grab on to the walk. I could grab if I was to grab a walk in this instance. I could grab onto it, and immediately I have a jabber that I could use to crush his esophagus. And if need be, it can also function as a pseudo shield. So if Jason was to strike with his machete, I could deflect the machete off the walk, and then BAM! Bash Jason in the side of the head, or BAM! Or bash Jason in his arm and then swing back up, and then continue to onslaught him, the onslaught, and discombobulate Jason enough to get away. That's the glory of a, sore, of a fighting style like mine. With every possible conceivable object around you immediately becomes a weapon. Even something like a tape measure. Alright? You pull hard enough, this edge will cut through flesh. I could choke, I could wrap the tape measure around Jason's throat and choke him. This is metal. This is. A metal band. I am not pulling this apart. I could pull with all my might and choke him and even twist back and forth like a saw-like motion gashing into Jason's throat. Can of WD-40. Blunt force and distraction. Like a pepper spray. Hell, even pot lids. Mini bucklers, okay? Block the machete and then bash. Or block the machete and gash. Even these pot lids become defensive and offensive weaponry. There's also the classics of if I'm able to pick up a sledgehammer. This becomes a weapon when it's used to attack somebody. It stops being a tool then. Which, in my belief, I believe that tools and weapons, they share interchangeable descriptions based on what you're using them for. If you're using, for example, a sword to cut, to cut wood, then it, could be used, then it could be classified as a tool. But if you're using a hammer to bash somebody in the head, then it could be classified as a weapon. Because the definition of a weapon is a tool used to cause bodily harm or death to an individual. 
and the definition of a tool is an item used to do a specific task or function. So I believe those can be interchangeable in how they're used. Even if I was to pick up the OG classic campground slash a weapon of an axe, okay, I wouldn't want, honestly, I would not want the axe as my first choice. If I'm being completely honest, it's heavy, it's cumbersome. I would much rather prefer picking up the sledgehammer before I would pick up this axe. Just simply because this axe is large, it's cumbersome. Now, I know what you're going to say, outlaw this is a fireman's axe. It's designed to be that way to get through uh, wooden doors and all kinds of other shit. Also, campground axes are about three pounds, so they're much lighter. Granted, I'm not uh, arguing that. But still, I would not immediately go for an axe like that. Now, something like this, which is my camping axe, the axe I'd go, I'd take with me if I was on a camping trip. Something like this, the Cold Steel Trail Boss. Yeah, I would, I would honestly pick something like this up just because of how light it is. I can use it one-handed. I have a bludgeoning side. I have an axe and a blade side. I need to clean this. I need to clean the uh, rust off of that. But yeah. So if you're going to tell me that uh, what if Jason causes you to lose your sword? It's not the end of the world for me. The sword is my preferred weapon. And is the weapon I am most skilled in using. But it's not the end of the world if I have to pick up something else. As I just demonstrated with the trail boss. And if my damn pants would quit falling down. Even if I have to just use a sticky stick. As Shadowversity would say, the stick, the ultimate weapon. Even if I just had, even if I had just this common stick, which is about the size of a quarter staff, I still have bludgeoning, I still have striking, and if I had to, I could just use it like a sword and combat Jason that way. The advantage of this is that I can choke up and down and use different grips and positions versus a sword. However, a sword does more lethal damage. This is quarter staffs and staffs in general are more non-lethal, lethal damage. Like it will do lethal damage if you hit somebody enough and hit somebody hard enough, but it won't instantly do lethal damage. Sword will. So if I had to fight Hockey Face Jason, all of Camp Crystal Lake is a weapon to me. All right? There is not a single article of tool, of arts and crafts, there's arts and crafts supplies, there's tools, hell, there's archery equipment there. I am not strapped or shorthanded when it comes to pick up weaponry. Alright. Now, with that being said, how would if I have if I was to just either have to fight Jason hockey face with a camping axe like this or a staff, how would I do it? Well, with the camping axe, I would actually use the pole 
more than I would use the edge. What I mean by that is a striking face does not get stuck in something as easily as an edge will. So I could bash Jason in the head, causing him to become discombobulated, and then switch the axe around and slash at his leg, causing him to fall, and then I would flip the axe around again and just bash in his skull. Or if I wanted to, I don't know, get the style points, I'd use the edge and split his skull like a piece of lumber. Then lies the other question. What if I'm using a quarter staff? Well, simply put, one force damage again. However, there's one key difference here, and that is with the quarter staff, I can't do nearly as much lethal damage. So what I would attempt to do in this scenario with the quarter staff is actually just wildly beat Jason as much as I can causing him to be thrown off balance and hopefully drop his machete. And once that machete is out of Jason's hands, I would then deliver a couple more quick, powerful blows to continually discombobulate him, and I would then uh, throw the... I would, th I would get rid of this thing. I would throw it as far away from me as I possibly could and beeline for that machete. And once I have that machete and Jason is unarmed, I would charge Jason while he's still unarmed. And I would hack and slash at him. I would hack and slash at his arms. I would hack and slash at his legs. I would, I would basically quick, feet, quick move around Jason, slashing and hacking at him until either he falls to the ground or uh, he starts to succumb to blood loss. Once I have Jason on the ground, even without my sword, and I have the machete in my hand, then I would just immediately keep hacking at his spine. And what I mean by that is I would keep hacking away at the spinal cord of his neck, completely severing his head from his body. Because here's the thing, we've never seen Jason be killed by, via decapitation. And although, as he goes later on in power, especially with the whole Revenant undead thing, Jason Voorhees, once he becomes undead, we never see anyone ever try a decapitation or blowing off his head. So... My theory is that if you manage to decapitate Jason, you may very well either be able to kill him or at least turn him non-lethal because his head would no longer because his body would no longer be able to react. His body would either continually move and the head would still be alive or the body would cease to function and all that would be left alive would be Jason's head. Then all you gotta do is just burn the body to ash, burn Jason's head. That may, I may have just inadvertently finished off the other two videos, but I will be making more videos on Jason. Right, 20 minutes. So, in conclusion, I hope I have basically proven that even if I'm left without my trusted sword, a fight between me and Jason would not end well for him, especially in his human form, and especially with the way my mind works, seeing every possible conceivable object around me as a weapon. Even these Yu-Gi-Oh tins and these steel wool balls. Weapons. Effective weapons? No. Weapons that I could use as a distraction by throwing to grab something more deadly? Yes. Even something as innocent as this uh, 
kerosene heater knob. I get my hands on it and it's become weaponized. So, in conclusion, even if I was to be left without my sword and I still had to fight Hockey Mask Jason, I honestly don't foresee me losing to any iteration of Jason Voorhees prior to zombification. Now, after zombification, my options become much more limited, and my strike and my target zones become much fewer. But I will also be doing a thing where I review uh, how to fight uh, the Revenant Undead Jason. So until next time, my noble band of outlaws, outlaw samurai, tells all y'all, be crazy rednecks, be safe when using your weapons, and don't go near Camp Crystal Lake. I'm out. Peace.